Okay, this is uh, what's left of the kit to go and Ken said he's not mucking about with wrapping and posting and anything like that. If anybody wants any of this stuff, they do have to come and get it. What's still left when we get to our garden party in July is going to go to the garden party to see if anybody else wants it. After that, it's going on eBay. So um, it's first come, first served, as usual. And I'm, I think I know what's for sale because some of this stuff is staying. <laughs> Obviously, need to get it right. First and foremost, there is a humidifier left. This is the older model of the HR15 that I've got, Hurricane Hector, with the different top. So it's got an eight-port eight top instead of a hood top like mine. But it's the same thing, effectively. Um, and Ken wants some money for this because, you know, th these are 300-odd quid new, if not more. Um, so I think he wants about 150 quid, if you'd be interested in that. And you will need to come and get it. You know, as I said, this, this is becoming hard work now. It's not not easy stuff. Um, there are some some of the big unit fans up here, but I've got a feeling Ken said he's going to keep some of those. What there is an awful lot of, and I mean a lot, is submersible pumps. The sort of thing you put in your garden pond. Because what um, Jeff had was lots of huge tanks of water so he collected rainwater in tanks underneath his staging inside the greenhouse and then used submersible pumps to get that water to wherever he wanted it. So there's a lot of those. I think there's some in there. There's some there. Uh, there's another one down there. But they are standard submersible pumps. They, you know, you plug them in, they pump water out one end to wherever you want it to go. They're brilliant for garden ponds to make a fountain or a little waterfall or something like that. So there's those. Those are definitely to go. There's more down here. There's some big ones down here. There's loads of them. So submersible pumps, many. Those I do definitely know are to go. Right. Um, let me think what else. All the watering units and everything down here, the hose lock stuff and the pipes with the little... Ken said he's probably going to use that in his own greenhouse now. Now he's had a think about it. There are lots of these new lights. Now these are unopened units. Um, they have got little tubes in them like this. Um, you can see that there they are, so you can look up what they are. As such they're 48 inch versions 180 centimeters they, these are plug in and go they're, they're the whole unit so it's the the bulb holders with the tubes you just plug them in and you've got lights so um, that's that's what they are and I think I forget what Ken said he wanted for those but if you, if you are interested these are one two three four five there's six of those and they're brand new and also these are the same thing wrapped up in a bundle here so these are the lights without the bulbs in and um, these are second hand these are used um, and there are some some tubes as well to go with it so that's that's the sort of lights aspect there are four of these things these are the old-fashioned lights I forget what they're called now but um, they have to have a, a ballast unit yeah um, so basically they take a high charge to get the bulb to start um, and they give off a lot of heat and they have a reflector to go with them these are large not suitable for small spaces they give off of quite a bit of heat some people have used these I know that have actually used these as their light units and a source of heat by actually incorporating a fan near the light you actually take the heat away from the light and distribute it around your grow room so uh, so there's some of that and quite honestly there isn't much else a lot of it's gone um, and as I said what's left is um, anybody interested um, I can follow it up for you um, but uh, as I say a lot of it's now gone now I don't know what's happening with these um, these are tube heaters I believe yeah winter heat they're like frost stats um, 
you plug them in and they they stop your place dropping down below freezing they're not they're not really they're not good enough or powerful enough to actually heat a greenhouse up to a reasonable temperature unless it was a tiny little space so uh, yeah that's what the, that's what there is the heaters have gone um, yeah so we managed to get rid of quite a bit of stuff and um, yeah I mean it's uh, most of the stuff has now been either cleared people have taken it away it's been put to one side because it's earmarked for people and this what I would call a relatively small amount is what's left um, the area over here which is where I filmed last time apart from those big lights down on the floor there those big old-fashioned lights this place was cleared out so all that was in here is now either been taken away or has been cleared over to that other storage area so there's not much left and um, when I get home we'll have a look at the extra plants I've got I've picked up I, I can't say that any of them are brilliant plants and we have actually found out what happened, but I'll go over that when, when I get back and, and we'll do the um, getting out of the box filming again when I get back. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. I will have to say that um, I've brought these plants home really to help Ken. Um, I can't say that I wanted any of them, but they're all small plants again to grow on. Um, and, you know, within a few weeks' time, I will have the space to have dedicated shelves for these plants. We have found out, we believe, why all of Derek's plants are so small. Apparently, that was not widely broadcast, when he moved house a while back, he lost most of his plants. And ever since then, he's been trying to replace them. So he's been taking anything he can get hold of via the internet and various means, so small divisions from other people and all stuff like that, it sort of explains it. Um, <clears throat> it also puts me on edge because it means they're not necessarily plants that he's had for some time. They've come from elsewhere, so are they healthy? <laughs> you see what I mean? And then the other thing that I started to look a bit more thoroughly today because I had more time is I think the majority of these are coming out of their pots. Um, you know what I'm like? I don't like not knowing what's in the pots. And some of these may well be rootless divisions that still haven't taken yet and therefore might not be in the best media to help that happen. You know, some of them might even need to go in moss for a while. I don't know. But you never know if you don't take them out of the pot. And none of them are in clear pots. So I haven't got a clue. Anyway, this is what I came back with. As I said, this is more as a favour to Ken than, than I need more plants. But uh, we'll see what we got. I don't think I picked any up that didn't have names on. Um, that was part of the criteria. So this is... Um, that looks like ODA. So an Odontodia. And that's going to be a very rare cross. Lutix, um, which is, um, would that be a species? I'll look these up. And then McBean's Aster. Um, so anything that's come out of McBean's is a bit of a rarity. Um, specialised sort of hybridizer based in the UK. Um, again, you know, old bulbs, leafless, and a single new growth that may or may not have roots. We will have to see what else we got then. Another little tiny one. Again, same criteria. Look, an old, an old plant, well, small plant, tiny plant, but it does have a new growth. And there are signs of new roots here. You know, I, I can bring this on. <laughs> Do I know what it is? Let's have a look. Whenever I see a label that's got writing all over it, I always sort of think, you know, what on earth is that going to be? Right, so this is a Milt Miltonia spectabilis. That's a Miltonia spectabilis. Oh, that is a Miltonia spectabilis. Not that. But it's crossed with another ODA, Odontodia. Elfion Golden Gate. And that's got a date on it of 1984, which may be when that hybrid was produced. It could be when this whole cross was produced. But again, you're probably looking at a rarity. You know, 
The problem is, if you go back prior to the um, Merricloning catching on and becoming widely used, people produced crosses from seed, you know, and, and put their seed in the flask and then produced little tiny seedlings. And they may have only ended up with a dozen, and that cross may never have been done again. And if, you know, if this cross was orig originated in 1984, how many of those original plants would still be alive? Could be a very rare plant, that one. Right, what have we got here? What we've got here is moss on the top of the pot. That usually means it's been in there a while. Again, tiny little new growth coming up there. Burnham's label. Oncidium, see there's a bug. <laughs> there was a bug, it was actually on the label. <laughs> Oncidium laevi. Laevi? I presume that's how you pronounce it. And that's got to be a very old Burnham's label because everything's in capital letters. I suspect that's a species. Um, Burnham's label. What have we got on the yellow one? Usually get dates or things on here. Nothing. I think Derek had a colour coding mechanism going on with these small colours. Not quite sure. May have been a way of um, recording them, you know. Possibly. Right, what we got here then? Now this is a single bulb with a growth that doesn't look that happy because it's buried too deep. So again, another good reason for getting it out of the pot. Uh, what have we got here then? What we've got here is... I haven't heard of that orchid nursery. Based in Columbia. Are we going to be able to read it? So no Donto Glossum, something or other. Hang on. Let's get a wet finger here. But given what I've been handling, I'm not licking my finger. We'll uh, get some water from behind us, see if we can get... Ah, oh, there we go, we can read it now. So, can we? Just about. Scrat... Uh, Christotellum. Odontoglossum Christotellum. I have to look that up. But again, you know, it's a species. This will, obviously, this goes back to the time um, before the Odontoglossums were reclassified. It's actually a while ago now. It's not, not a recent thing. Right. Yeah. No, a hybrid this time. Uh, with a named clone. I'll have to look that up because sparrow is not spelt like that if that's what that's meant to be. So again, it's an ODA and it's drummer boy, the sparrow. I think that's what that says, but we'll look it up. Uh, that's where I find Google very useful because you've only got to spell it roughly right. It'll correct you. Don't know what that label's trying to tell me. Well... We'll go with the, the name that looks like a recognisable name. Now, I picked this one because um, the colour of the leaves is different. Now, there could be a very good reason for that. I don't know. <laughs> could have got too much light. Um, what have we got here? What we've got here is an OID. But look at the chain of dates on there. I presume those are repotting dates. It's got a history, this plant, hasn't it? <laughs> Uh, before time began, because it's got no no ID. So, there's another one. Right, what have we got here then? What we've got here is a rotting bulb. That'll have to come off. Um, again, a, a relatively new growth with signs of roots coming out of the base. So possibly recoverable. This is an odontocidium by the looks of it, and that looks like... Madge Fan, Golden Gate. Again, I, I can look there, and that's an awarded plant, or was once. Um, so, we'll see what comes out from a search on that one. And herein endeth those types, and then I got a couple of these to try. I know nothing about them. They're both Sologenes, um, and they may grow into giants, in which case they'll go to somebody else, because I can't be dealing with giants. But, you know, two leaved bulbs, two non-leaved bulbs, and a new growth coming and it has got roots. So, you know, it, we'll see what comes of it. And that's um, 
I've heard of that. Can I pronounce it though? It's Mem W. Mitch Ditz, I think. Again, look at the history on that. Um, and again, that was an awarded plant at some point or another. Again, I'll, I can look this up because I only need to type, you know, W M I C H, and it will give me the rest of it. So, uh, so a little syllogony there. Um, if any of these plants are to go by, this could be a giant. <laughs> and then there again, it might not be. And then, um, oh, would you believe it? Oh well, never mind. They'll both go in the same pot. I do believe this is another one of the same. Yes, it is. Oh, we can see it now. Michelitz, M-I-T-C-H-O-L-I-T-Z. So to the same there, um, and in a similar position there, some older leaved bulbs and a nice new growth coming. So they can go in the same pot. There's no point in having them in separate pots, so they'll go together. So that's what I came up with, or came home with. Um, and as I said, the, the logic here is, is really just to help Ken out. Like he said, as, as we were saying, Cheerio at the gate, you know, he said, if he hadn't done this, these plants would all be dead on the vine by now, literally. Because if nobody'd sorted this out, they'd have just been left in the glass house to die. Same with Jeff's, you know. Ken's done all the work. Organising, being there to get people in and, you know, all that sort of stuff, so... Uh, yeah, that's where I put the original lot, over there. They, they, they're just occupying one single shelf at the moment. They're back from the glass, because I don't want them too close to the glass with the stronger light. Um, and Derek specialised in cooler growers. So all of these have come into an alien environment, <laughs> i.e. warmer than they're used to. Some of them will put up with it, some of them might even like it, but they won't all. Some of them are going to object a bit. You know, it's like having a load of Miltoniopsis in a warm place. This is not ideal, is it? And they're never going to thrive and do brilliantly, fit as butcher's dogs. They're always going to be behind compared with some other people's. So that was my first lot. What was that? That was two, four, six, eight, nine. And now we've come back, oh, ten, because uh, ten, because this was one of them, wasn't it? Oh, and this one. So eleven last time. And this time we've come back with two, four, six, eight, nine, two of which are the same. So, uh, 20 new plants. Get rid of 40, 20 straight in. Not good. But they're all tiny. And um, in two years, they're not going to fill my space up. In two years, they may have recovered enough to call them reasonable plants and may get back to blooming size. Some of them may be actual miniatures, but I don't think so. I think they've, you know, they've just been um, dwarfed in some, some sort of way. Um, anyway, that's irrelevant. I've got them now. It's up to me to look after them. So you can guarantee these are coming out of the pots in the not too distant future to see what they're in. I will try and take them out incredibly carefully by holding them in my hand, you know, the old sort of hold them like this and turn them upside down to stop the media coming out and try and take the pot off of the media, yeah, and, and see if it will come out in one unit. And then I can look at it, see what it's composed of and see if there are any roots showing. And in some cases they may go straight back in the pot and stay there. And in other cases I will repot them as normal. But um, the fact that they're all in, in this a similar state, I need them in a media that is for inducing roots and growing a decent root system, not necessarily the same media that the adult plant would go in. You know, that's, that's the difference really, when you, certainly with you getting the Oncidium types. Young plants and things like that need to go in a much finer mix but they still need to, a bit of air around them. It doesn't want to be compacted. And, um, and then some of them grow up into plants that are huge and still have a fine root system. And, you know, I mean, Sotoanum, for instance, the roots are so fine on that, you could almost plant a mature plant in a seedling mix. They're just such a fine root system. And others, great big chunky strapping roots. So, anyway, so that's what I got, and that's the end of it. Um, the kit that you saw at the beginning, a reminder there, I filmed it and talked about it. And if you're interested in any of that, you will have to come and get it. 
And I'll emphasize that. Ken said he's not mucking about. If anybody wants stuff at heavily discounted prices, well, come and get it then. <laughs> uh, um, there is one exception to that. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get asked again about the humidifier. And um, it's a distant memory. Helen asked me about the humidifier and I said I would deal with it. Um, but what I need to know, is this the same Helen that I met at a Wessex orchid show? And in which case, if you are that same person who introduced herself, oh, this is a few years ago now, um, how far away are you? You know, did you travel an awful long way to come to that Wessex show or, or are you relatively local to where that show was held? Because if so, I can get it to you. Yeah? I don't mind doing a favour. I'll combine it with doing something else in that area, like visit Lynn or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, under that set of circumstances, I, I can get it to you. It's, um, you know, it's a good road. It's not going to take me long to get into that area. So uh, you, you may get a delivery there. So uh, it's up to you to follow it up, though. Um, and as I said, I may be talking about two entirely different people, <laughs> but I'm not sure. So anyway, that's that. If you want the kit, contact me about it. But, you know, bearing in mind, you will need to come and get it. Um, um, which probably means I'm not going to be able to get rid of any of it for Ken. And Ken's happy, he's got it locked up now, out of his way, out of the um, uh, greenhouse areas. It's all, it's all tucked away. Um, he's picked some of the stuff he's going to keep himself. What's left is going to go. And if it hasn't gone by the time our garden party comes round, he's going to bundle it up in the trailer, take it to the garden party, and just, because he's the chairman now, um, he'll just announce that all the stuff is over in my trailer. Come and decide what you want, and we'll talk about how much it is. And then after that, what's left is just going on eBay and people can bid on it. So uh, that's how it's going to be. As I said, I'm not in control of that, but I've, I've tried to help out where I can. And I'll see you. Well, <laughs> the next thing that's going to happen with these plants is some kitchen time, which I know some people look forward to, but I've got so little that needs repotting in here at the moment. And some of the stuff that needs repotting is in the orchids to go. It's somebody else's job now. Um, the prima donna desperately needs repotting, so that's coming soon. But not much else, really. So this influx of little, little pots could mean a fair bit of kitchen time. And we'll see how we go. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.